Well, I'm one happy soul. I've got goodness untold. I've got another day. I've got a lot to say. He's been good. He's been, he's been good. 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 Well, I've got new life sublime. I got my own right mind. I got a light to shine. Is my bottom line? He's been good. 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 Can I get a witness? Can I hear from you? Can I get a witness? Can I hear from you? You say, Can I get a witness? Can I hear from you? Can I get a witness? Can I hear from you? He's been, he's been good. He's, he's been good. He's been good. He's been good. Can I get a witness? And can I get a witness? Can I hear from you? Can I get a witness? Can I? He's been good. 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 I can't hold it in. I can't hold it. God's been good to me. I can't hold it. God's been good to me. I can't hold it. God's been good to me. I can't hold it. I can't hold it. God's been good. I can't hold it. I can't hold it. God's been good to me. I can't hold it. God's been good. I can't hold it. I can't hold it. God's been good. I can't hold it. He's been good. 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 You can't tell it like I tell it. You can't. You can't tell it like let me tell it. God's been good to me. You can't tell it. Let me tell it. God's been good to me. You can't tell it. Let me tell it. God's been good to me. You can't tell it. Let me tell it. God's been good to me. You can't tell it. Let me tell it. God's been good to me. You can't tell it. God's been. You can't tell it. Let me tell it. You can't tell it. You can't tell it. You can't tell it. He's been good. 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 You can't tell it. You can't tell it. Let me tell it. God's been good. I see 2024. Let me tell it. God. Yes, you can't tell it. Let me tell it. Yes, you can't tell it. Let me tell it. God's been good to me. You can't tell it. Let me tell it. You can't tell it, let me tell it, God's been good to me. You can't tell it, let me tell it, God's been good to me. You can't, you can't tell it, let me tell it, God's been good to me. Yes, you can't tell it, let me tell it, God's been good to me. You can't, you can't tell it, let me tell it, God's been mighty good to me. You can't tell it, let me tell it, God's been, he's been good, he's been good. He's been good. Come on, 
Come on, give God glory. Come on, come on, come on. Give him glory. Give him glory. Hallelujah. If there's anybody in the house tonight that knows that the Lord has been good, how about you just give your God some praise? Come on, this really is the day that the Lord has made. We are rejoicing and we are glad in it. From the rising of the sun this morning to the setting of the same tonight, is there about five of you in the house tonight who can testify that God has been good? If you've come to worship tonight, just stand to your feet and praise your God. If you have come waiting for a revival, just stand and give your God praise where you are. This truly is the day that the Lord has made. And if there are any worshipers in the house tonight who can give God a shout, who can give God a praise, who can give God a hallelujah, who can lift up holy hands and say, God's been good to me. If you're here tonight, just wave your hand. Just say, God, I thank you. Just say, God, I love you. Just say, God, I worship you for how good you've been. God has been good. Praise him while you can. Praise him while you can. Praise him with your mouth. Praise him with your feet. Praise him with your whole heart and give your God praise. Come on, put those hands together and praise your God tonight. You may be seated in the presence of Almighty God, for the goodness of the Lord is with us. The presence of the Lord is here, and we feel it in the atmosphere. We are here tonight. We crossed over a few days ago when the devil thought he would take us out. But here we are looking good and smelling fine. Uh, are there any black folk in the church tonight just looking good and smelling fine? Are there any true believers that just has a reason to say thank you for being with me, God? My brothers and my sisters, we are here tonight to be revived. We are here tonight to give it all to God. And I don't know about you, but I've come expecting God to move in this place. I've come expecting God to break chains free. I've come expecting God to make miracles happen. Are there any persons who've come with an expectation praise of what the Lord is going to do? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have in front of you your revival order of worship, and we are going to follow it outline. The Reverend Robin Anderson, the host pastor, will come and lead us in our invocation, followed by the congregational hymn, Revive Us Again in That Mitre. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Come on. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it, how about you give God some praise as Reverend Anderson comes. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. I don't know about you. Anybody came to be revived today? This is a revival, amen? And you got to come with some expectations, amen, that God is going to revive you, that I'm not leaving here the same way I came in, but that God was going, is, is going to revive me on tonight. Anybody expecting God to revive them on tonight? Hallelujah. Well, let us invoke his presence, amen. Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God. Fall fresh on us. Shape us. Mold us. Fill us. And then use us. Spirit of the living God. Have your way, God, in this revival service on today. God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will revive each and every one of us through your presence, through your power, and through your spirit. So, God, we give ourselves away unto you. Have your way in this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let us rise to our feet. 
for our hymn of praise, Revive Us Again. seated in the presence of the Lord. Somebody ought to say hallelujah, thine the glory. Amen. The Reverend Patricia Washington Rice will come and read our scripture for the evening, followed by the Reverend Samuel Blanks for our evening prayer. And then we will have musical selections by the Mount Olive AME Zion Church Choir. Let the church say amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. We are here to celebrate Jesus and to be revived. Our scripture lesson will be coming from the book of Acts, the first chapter, verses 5 through 8. And it reads thusly. For John baptized with water. But in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or the dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria, and to all the ends of the earth, to God be the glory. May he bless the reading, the hearers, and the doers of his most holy word. Amen. seated. If you're not too scared of your neighbor, won't you just look at him and say, neighbor, I'm expecting a miracle. Come on, you better tell somebody else. Tell them, tell them, neighbor, I'm expecting a miracle. I didn't come to church tonight not to expect something, and if you showed up tonight, you came expecting God to do something. And as we prepare for prayer, 
Won't you just center yourself right there as we go to God in prayer. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. And when everything else around us seem to be sinking, it is on Christ, the solid rock that we stand. When friends and family forsake us, it is on Christ, the solid rock that we stand. When we're walking through valleys of despair and grief, it is on Christ, the solid rock that we stand. And God, even in shaky times that we're living in, we want to say thank you that it was at your name that demons trembled. God, we say thank you that even when we didn't know what to say or even how to pray, even when we were sinking never to rise no more, but it was at your name, God, that saved us just not from our sins, but saved us from ourselves. And we showed up tonight, God, just to say thank you. Thank you, God, that we didn't die in our sins. Thank you, God, that you gave us another chance. In fact, those second chances that we've already used. But, God, we thank you tonight that we showed up knowing that, God, anything is possible because your word is true. So, Father, tonight we, we come, God, in need of something. God, some hearts are heavy. Some God battling God with things internally, but we've learned how to fake it on the outside and we're barring a smile even right now because even as we speak, God, someone is confused or some might even feel as if that they don't know which way and where to turn. But God, we want to say thank you tonight. We thank you tonight, God, that, that you will hear us. We thank you tonight that you will revive us. We thank you tonight that you will send a right now rainbow word. We thank you tonight, God, for there's power in your name. So, Father, we pray that as we go through and this worship experience tonight, God, that however we came in, we won't leave the same way. We thank you, God, that bodies will be healed. We thank you, God, that minds and, and people will be delivered. We, we thank you tonight, God, that, that Lord, that, that, that you would dry the tears that's fallen from our eyes. We, we thank you tonight, God, that your will will be done. Because, in fact, you've already made your mind up in heaven. So, God, help us, Lord, to go through. And we thank you that even on day five, that you're still creating something. So God, now we pray that you would move and use the preacher tonight, God. Speak through the preacher tonight, God. Use her tonight, God, as an instrument of your peace. And we will always give your name praise. And the church of the living God said amen.
Hallelujah. Salvation and glory. Yeah. 
Come on, you know that the Lord is wonderful tonight. Come on, is there anybody that knows that you serve a wonderful God? That you have a testimony of just how wonderful the Lord has been. You ought to say hallelujah for your salvation. You ought to say glory for his power. You ought to lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up. Ye everlasting doors. And guess what? The King of glory shall come in. Somebody give their God some praise tonight. Hallelujah in this house. Thank you so much, choir, for blessing us. Reverend Samuel Blanks will come back for our offering appeal tonight. But if you just have a hallelujah in your spirit, you ought to just let it out, let it out, and give your God glory. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask if Dr. Counts will come. Let's see, share. Don't stop worshiping. Come on, don't stop worshiping. Hallelujah. For well, it's time for us to prepare our hearts and our minds to give tonight. For giving is indeed a part of worship. It is more blessed to give than to receive. We don't give grudgingly or out of necessity because God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. He loves a cheerful giver. And as we prepare our hearts and minds to give tonight, the asking is $20. $20 is what we are asking for our offering this evening. If you are looking to pay by check, you can um, pay via um, Hartford District, AME Zion, amen. And if you are like me and you give electronically, Amen. We do have Cash App, and our cash tag is Hartford District A M E Z. Amen. Hartford District. Let me get it right, because for those of us who give online, it is Hartford District A M E Z. So whether you are giving online or if you are giving here live in the worship experience with cash or check, we are believing right now that God is going to bless both the gift and the giver. Amen. Amen. So as we prepare our hearts and minds to give this evening. All right, the cash tag is Harford District AMEZ with one D, one D, not two Ds, but one D, amen, amen. And as we prepare our hearts and minds to give this evening, we're going to follow the direction of our ushers tonight, and we're going to ask our music ministry to bless us with some giving music so that we can give jubilantly this evening, amen. So let's all stand and let us prepare our hearts to give.
Let us all stand as we bless the offering tonight. All things come of thee. You may be seated in God's presence. Amen. How blessed you are. Are you feeling good tonight, somebody? Come on, if you're feeling good tonight, just let the Lord know how good you're feeling. Amen. Before the Walters Memorial Choir comes, we want to introduce the presiding elder so that once the music comes we want to do that now so that the elder can then come and introduce the preacher for the evening how blessed we are to be led on this hartford district by such a dynamic man of god who is always led by the spirit first led by the voice of god led by the conviction that he knows that he knows that he knows that he knows that God is speaking not only to him and through him. Our presiding elder tonight gathered us together on this, the first Friday evening of the new year. Amen. And he did that not because he wanted to raise an offering. He did that not because he did not have anything else better to do. But he did that because he wanted to gather the people of God together to show our appreciation to our almighty God. That's the kind of elder we serve. So Hartford District, I am so delighted and excited to be able to serve not only under him and with him, but serve on this dynamic Hartford District. Following the choir, you will hear and be greeted by none other than our presiding elder, Reverend Moses L. Harvell. Would somebody just give God praise for our leadership tonight? Amen. Choir, would you come and lead us this evening? Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Yes, Hallelujah. We came to praise God tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. It's a great night to praise the Lord. Yes, Why? Yes. Because we are alive. Yes. Hallelujah. We have breath in our bodies. Yes. Hallelujah. And if you came out to celebrate Jesus with us, stand on your feet and praise God tonight with us. Amen. Continue to reign. You're wonderful. 
you're wonderful. So let the praises ring. Sing hallelujah. Sing. Oh, hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah to our matchless King. We worship and profess you as our King. And tell all the nations you are you are. You are everything. You are everything. Hallelujah. Everybody. Hallelujah. Oh, Sing hallelujah to our restless King. We worship and profess you as a King. We worship and. Everybody, Sing hallelujah to our matchless King. We'd like for you to clap your hands right here. We praise and magnify your name.
Press me in. I pray for it. Increase. And prayed. I prayed. I prayed. Me. Yes, I did. Hallelujah. 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 Anybody in the house praying for increase in 2024? Say, anybody in the house praying for what? For what? For what? For what? For what? Then come on, bless the Lord even now. Glory to God. Increase. Praise the Lord. Thank God he's able to give you more ever think or conceive. God is able to do more in 2024. Come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah. Praise God. This is a ex explosion time. It's explosion time. Praise God. And, uh, we, we, we come to uh, be filled, uh, to be refreshed. Amen. We come to be free. And so if you're somewhere sitting where you think you can't be free, then perhaps you need to move. You need to move because somebody might explode right next to you. You got to be ready. Ready. Somebody got to be ready for the explosion. I'm ready for it. Praise God. I won't. Whatever the Lord desire to do, I'm ready. The Lord said to me this. This is the year to say yes. 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 As you can see, we had to regroup. Uh, as you can notice, Reverend Dr. Darren Mitchell is not here today, uh, but he sent his prayers. He could not come, but, uh, but we've been praying and fasting. And God's going to bless us tonight. So what could I say? But yes. It's the year of yes. Not my will. Praying, I've been praying, I've been praying and fasting and looking for this day, for this moment, for months of planning and praying and encouraging and waiting and the answer came yes look at somebody and say yes this is the year to say yes well all my pastors to stand all the pastors to stand that's present all the pastors to stand praise god praise god i I could remain standing. I want, to, I want them to see you. I could have called any of them this morning. Any of them this morning. I could have called them. And they would have been ready to preach tonight. Any of them. Come on, praise God for our preachers, our pastors. Come on. Any of them with me. Because... They got a yes spirit. <laughs> Some say yes. What kind of spirit? Yes. A yes spirit. Yes. But you can be seated. It's, 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 it's not your assignment tonight. <laughs> and it's not my assignment. We have come to be filled to hear what the Lord has to say to us as we move forward in 2024. And so the revivalist, she didn't know she was going to be here. And I didn't either. <laughs> but 
she said yes. She said yes. Willing to be used by the Lord to speak. That God might speak through her to speak to us. Now listen, how many need a word from the Lord? I mean, how many, how many really need a word? I mean, I mean, come on, how many, how many expect to hear a word tonight? You, you, you got to be in expectation that God's going to speak to us through our presiding elder Jacqueline King. She's no stranger. She's a product of New England Conference, the Hartford District. She pastored and first at St. Luke and came on back and passed at Spotswood and product of Mount Pleasant and the product of Cross Street Church. No strength to us. And so, who better to come? I could have reached, I could have reached a little further. I could have. But didn't have to go far. Lord says, what you need is right here. <laughs> Call her. And see what she would say. And she said, yes. Come on. Praise God right there. Come on, come on, come on. Praise God, I'm, and she's going to come today. We thank God for the music ministry. It's good to hear the Hartford District choirs. Come on, if you've been blessed from Cross Street, my Olive and Walters, thank God. I want us to do something. Everybody stand. And you know I can't lead it, but I want you to stand if you're able. If you're able to stand, come on, come on, come on, come on, if you're able to stand, praise God, praise God. Clap those hands one more time. Come on. Come on, come on. Remain stand. Somebody lead us, lead us on a song. Somebody that, that can lead us on a song we all can sing. And next for us will be that, our presiding elder, Jacqueline King of the Boston District. Presiding elder. Of that beautiful, bountiful, blessed, and all of that is of the Boston district. Come on, praise the Lord for her. And let's sing, let's sing. Come on, let's sing something that will lift us all up to get ready, even more so for the word I need to hear from the Lord. Come on, come on, come on, come on. My soul has been anchored in the Lord. <laughs> Though the storms keep on raging in my life. And sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day. Still that hope that lies within is reassured. As I keep my eyes upon the distant shore, I know he lead me safely to that blessed place he hath prepared. But if the storms don't cease and if the wind Keep on blowing My soul My soul has been Anchored in the Lord Oh, 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 oh. Those 
sometimes in this life we all are gonna be tossed tossed and driven by the waves and the currents that seem so fierce but we don't have to worry because in the word of God I have got an anchor and it keeps me steadfast y'all keeps me unmovable despite the time but if if that old strong storms don't cease and just in case those strong winds they keep on blowing in my life my soul thank you Lord my soul's blanket in the Lord in the Lord, in the Lord, my, 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 soul my, 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 soul my, 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 soul my, 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 the pillows may roll, the breakers may dash. I shall not stray because he holds me fast. So dark the days, clouds in the sky. I know it's all right because Jesus is not. Listen, you push me down, but Jesus picks me up. He always stands by me when the going gets my soul has been anchored in the A lot happened in 2023, but I tell you, I thank God that my soul <laughs> is anchored. I didn't quit <laughs> in 23. <laughs> I made it <laughs> to 24. Anybody got that same testimony in the house tonight? Hey! Because of the word of God, you made it. Yes, Glenda, you made it. <laughs> yes, Glenda, you made it. Hallelujah. My soul has been anchored. Oh, yes, in the Lord. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Father God, I bless you. I praise you. I worship you. I honor you. I give you glory. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. I thank you, God, for being a real God, for being the love of our souls, for being the anchor. Hallelujah that keeps us attached. I thank you for the privilege to stand before your people. And now I ask God that you would look beyond my faults. Hey, and meet the needs of your people in this place. There's so many, but Lord God, you're more than able. And I thank you in advance and give you all the glory, all the praise, all the honor belongs to you. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. Oh, Holy Spirit, have your way. And Lord, I thank you in advance for what you're about to do in this house tonight. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' blessed name, let the people of God say amen. Come on, praise him. 
Yes, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Anybody come to have a revival? <laughs> to magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. I praise God from whom all blessings flow to the great presiding elder, Moses L. Harville. Yes, praise God for him. Yes. I'm not mad at you. Uh, there was a time when I used to say I have to preach. Now I say I get to preach. Hallelujah. Or it was I got to preach. No, I get to preach. And I thank God because, yes, he could have called any one of his preachers to, to fill this spot or anybody. He knows a lot of people. But he called on me. And it's so ironic last night. <laughs> I was on a prayer line. And I had my do-rag on my head, <laughs> my pajama top. And I put on the video, my picture, not the video, the picture. And I participated in prayer silently along with everyone else. And then I got a text, we want you to do the invitation. Prayer started at 8. I got the text at 8.26 <laughs> from Dr. Merriweather, who's been here recently. And there was 300 people on the line, on the Zoom call. So I, real quick, <laughs> ran and got myself together. <laughs> and I didn't answer him yes or no. But I went back to the computer and then just when I sat down, he said, uh, Presiding Elder Jacqueline King, you still on? I said, yes, I am and I'm available to do what you have asked. And God told me from that point on, be ready and be available. Wow. This was last night, y'all. Wow. Wow. <laughs> be ready and be available. So I thank you, Elder, for the opportunity to come. And yes, I'm here and I'm leaning and trusting in the Lord. I thank God for this host pastor, Reverend Robin Anderson. I do want to acknowledge First Lady Olivia Harville and her in absentia. I do praise God for the worship leader, Pastor L. Christopher Lewis. Thank God for all the pastors in the house, officers and great people of this Hartford district, to the musicians and the, the ministers of music and the choirs and everyone that shared tonight that truly blessed my soul. I tell you, that song was a perfect song. Yes, it was. And I thank God I see way, 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 way in the back. My sister, <laughs> Deborah Harrison, is here. And I thank God for her. I didn't think she was coming. She didn't tell me she was coming. But I'm so glad to see her. And I'm so glad to be here in Jesus' name. And I also want to acknowledge a pastor from the Boston district, new pastor, Pastor Isaiah McCorkle, praise God for him. I thank God for that support. There is a word from the Lord. Mm. Coming from John chapter 4. John chapter 4. Hallelujah. Are y'all praying? Oh, yes. John chapter 4, verse 7. I will begin with, it's a familiar text for those who have been around the church for a while. And it says, a woman of Samaria came to draw water. And Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, how is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman. For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. 
title for this message on tonight is The Power for Discipleship. Hashtag, they need a drink. Somebody said they need a drink. Oh, yes. Come on. Let's praise God. Hallelujah. They need a drink. The power for discipleship. Anybody come to be revived tonight? In the text, Jesus is in the early season of ministry when he, had, he was traveling th through with his disciples, preaching and teaching and making more disciples and performing miracles and marvelous works, you know, doing his Jesus thing. And the word got out. And as I was preparing this word, I, I had to stay right there. And the word got out. See, see, you know, when you start in ministry, preachers and pastors and everyone in here, you, you don't have to worry about sending out cards or posts or, or, or putting out a word that you're available and you want to preach. All you got to do is just do the work. Come on, anybody, any witnesses in here, just do the work. And when you do the work, then the word gets out. And they will come to you. They will call for you. And you won't have to call for them. See, Jesus knew that the Pharisees heard about him. And they wanted to stop the work, so he left Judea and headed for Galilee. Now, traditionally, when traveling between Judea and Galilee, the Jews would avoid Samaritans or the Samaritan territory by crossing to the east bank of the Jordan River, but not Jesus. Jesus needed to go through Samaria. The scripture tells us that while traveling, Jesus was wearied from his journey, saw Jacob's well, and took a seat. And while he was there, around noon, a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to him, give me, said to her, give me a drink. And the woman looked at him with confusion, and rightly so. First of all, she was a woman. So why would Jesus speak to her? Because Middle Eastern women were considered greatly inferior to men to the point that no man spoke to Eve ever spoke to a woman in public, not even a wife, a sister, or a mother. Second, she was a Samaritan. So why would Jesus speak to her? Because traditionally, Jews hated and avoided Samaritans because they believed that Samaritans betrayed the faith by intermarrying with foreigners and worshiping their gods. And this was totally against the commandments given by Jehovah God. Third, she was at Jacob's well to draw water at noon. But why was she there at that time? Because most women usually fill their water jars in the morning or at sunset when it was cooler. And finally, she was practicing social distancing, not because of COVID, but because of her reputation and possibly her occupation. See, she knew a lot of men in the biblical sense. Now you understand her confusion. Despite knowing all of this, Jesus still went out of his way to have an encounter with this woman. And some may think that their meeting was just coincidental, that Jesus was thirsty and tired from his journey and decided to stop at this well for a rest. But I submit to you tonight that nothing takes Jesus by surprise. Jesus trusted in his father with all of his heart and, 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 and trusted in God. And he, all his ways, he acknowledged God and God directed his path. Jesus was led by the spirit to meet with this woman. He knew that he would have the encounter and that it would change her life forever along with the lives of many others. How many know we serve a God that is an all-wise, all-knowing, all-passionate, all-powerful, all-compassionate, 
Oh, yes, he is. He's a mighty God. And that's a good place right there to praise God. Ha, uh, huh, yes, if you believe he's a good God, uh, if he brought you from a mighty long way, if he just brought you through the day, hallelujah, he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, our God is worthy to be praised. And what excites me is that this woman was not a prophetess, a priestess, a preacher, nor a person of position, oh, no prosperity or importance. I suggest to you that she was probably a prostitute or at least promiscuous. But regardless, she was significant enough to Jesus for him to go out of his way to speak to her. One of the lessons I've learned during this pandemic is that we have to take time and sometimes go out of our way to speak with people because tomorrow is not promised. And I don't care who they are, where they come from, and what they've done in the past. I don't care if they're black, white, purple, or pink. I don't even care if they're LBGTQ or LMNOP. Nothing, no place, no programs, no paycheck, no plan, and no politics is more important than the people. We need to reach the masses. Men of every birth, all people are important. And everyone should have an opportunity to experience a fresh encounter with God. Hallelujah to experience more of his love and more of his grace and more of his wisdom and more of his power, more of his presence. Oh, I need more of God. I've been doing this thing for over 30 years and I still need more of God. More, I heard more in 2024. Yes, I want it. I want it. I got to have more. I need more of God. Somebody say, I need a drink. Even, 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 hallelujah, in our confusion, Jesus knows what we need. Yes, he does. He told the woman, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. And if we are going to secure our future, it can only be done through a move of the Holy Spirit, church. Acts chapter 1, 8, that's your scripture, says, but ye shall receive what? After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses, disciples unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the, of the earth. Scripture tells us, ask, and it shall what? Seek, and ye what? Knock and the door will be what? The Samaritan woman asked and God delivered. And following three things were received. And then I'm going to get out your way. We're going to pray, of course. And then I'm going to get out your way. Amen. The first thing she received was a new learning. Somebody say a new learning. See, dehydration happens when our bodies are not consuming enough water or fluids to account for the water lost. And the only way we can secure our future is to stay spiritually hydrated or it could result in the body shutting down or even death. Symptoms from physical dehydration include fatigue, dizziness, reduced cognitive processing, or confusion. This woman thought she knew something about how Jews treated Samaritans. She thought she knew something about where and how one ought to worship. She thought she knew something about the coming Messiah. But because of the sinful life she was living, she was weak in her flesh and confused in her mind. This woman was dying from spiritual dehydration and didn't even know it. However, through her encounter with Jesus, she came to realize that her former learning, hear this, was not sufficient nor complete. She needed a new normal, somebody. 
she needed some new learning. She needed a drink. She couldn't re rely on the past traditions, but what she needed was a word to receive the faith to believe. She needed a rimmer word, a right now word, a fresh word for her current situation. And we, the church, cannot rely on yesterday's anointing. Oh, I got to say that again. We cannot rely on yesterday's anointing. If we are going to meet the needs of the people of this generation. Oh, Jesus. We need fresh wind and fresh fire. Thanks be to God. Jesus was willing to oblige. <laughs> Jesus stirred up his gifts. <laughs> he gave her a word. First, he gave her a word of knowledge. He read her sinful life, but he didn't judge her. Mm. He spoke the truth in love. He showed compassion and was patient to answer her questions. Jesus revealed the woman, hallelujah, to the woman that he knew she had five husbands, and the one that she was with wasn't her husband. Next, he gave her a word of wisdom. Jesus revealed to her that place of worship was not where she thought, nor what God was concerned about. But God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him how? And this is the true worshiper that the Father is seeking to worship him. It is not about where, but the how we worship that is important to God. We need to have a fresh encounter with Jesus because only he can reveal the hidden idols in our lives. And when we are humble and willing to turn from our wicked ways and be truthful with ourselves and with God about all that we lack and truly repent, then he will give us a new learning. <laughs> if we confess our sins, the Bible tells us he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But once we are cleansed, he won't leave us naked and empty, praise God. <laughs> he will clothe us with the garments of salvation and cover us with the robe of righteousness and fill us with the precious Holy Spirit. He will give us a drink. Therefore, hallelujah, in addition to a new learning, the Samaritan woman received a new burning. Somebody say a new burning. Somebody say a new burning. I heard a preacher say that I'm so glad I got my burning with my learning. <laughs> I didn't understand it at the time until I went to Yale Divinity School. He was saying education is good, and yes, it is good, but you better get some Holy Ghost power to go with that education if you're going to make it in this world. And I remember those difficult days, Shelly Best, yes. Those difficult days when I just wanted to throw in the towel and quit. I remember those sacrifices and weary nights and the times when I was so spent, oh, I could hardly move. But if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side, hallelujah, I didn't understand it. But I know now that God set me up to be the pastor of the black church at Yale to keep me at Yale. <laughs> at one time I said to myself, I don't need this. I'm already ordained. <laughs> I can serve God without a degree. But it wasn't about me, church. Hear this. At that point, it was about the people that God sent me there for. But how can I help them when I was spent? I was empty and I needed a drink. Not alcohol, but living water. I was thirsty. And Jesus said in John 7, 37, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow what? Rivers of living water. This he spoke concerning the spirit whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit had not yet been given because Jesus was not yet glorified. But I believe because of the faith of this woman who even took the time to talk to Jesus, he gave her a foretaste of that which was to come. 
Because the Bible tells us, 4.26, that after Jesus revealed to her that he was the Messiah, she believed Jesus and told others the good news. She went back to the city and said to the men, you know, the ones she knew, come see a man who told me all things that I've ever done. Could this be the Christ? She got her burning because she needed power to be his witness in Samaria. Again, it was a foretaste of Acts chapter 1, verse 8. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in Judea and all of Samaria and all to the end of the earth. There is a power shortage in our churches. How do I know? Because people are not showing up. And it has nothing to do with the threat of COVID. These, there's too many empty pews in here because there's a power shortage in our churches. But when we have a new burning, this will happen. John chapter four tells us that many of the Samaritans of that city believed in him because of the word of the woman who testified. Because of her witness, they became thirsty. Because she was on fire, shut up in her bones, they become thirsty. And as I remember when Reverend Anthony Freeman was here, late last time I saw him here, he talked about how because you were so salty, he became thirsty. And I like that. <laughs> but I also suggest to you that he brings about thirst too. And yes, when you are on fire for the Lord, hallelujah, those around you will become thirsty. When was the last time you were so excited about the goodness of God that you couldn't wait to tell it? If it's been a long time, then it's time for a revival. Hallelujah. It's time for a spiritual renewal, a spiritual awakening. It's time to get back to the place where you first received. It's time to seek God in a new way. It's time to get on your face and turn over your plate. You need a drink, hallelujah. Woo, if you find yourself in a difficult place, a dark place where others won't go, if you're really, you really want to secure your future, then be willing to go to those places. Somebody is waiting for you. Somebody is dying. When God spoke to me about being ready, that wasn't the first time last night he spoke that. December was a different kind of month for me. I found myself um, not going out much. I found myself fasting. I found myself in the presence isolated. And God, I knew he was doing something. Mm -hmm. I knew because it was different. December is time of partying and going out and buying gifts. I didn't buy any gifts. <laughs> Oh, it was a time of being with family and friends and, and, and fellowshipping, but I just felt like being alone with God. And even in my dreams, uh, the enemy was attacking my dreams, and I would wake up in a sweat and, and fighting and fussing and heart palpitations, but I knew God was working in the midst of that because the enemy tried to distract me. And you got to understand when the enemy comes in like a flood, God will lift up a standard. Yes, he do I have a witness in the house that he will deliver you. He will be with you. He will cover you. Oh, with the blood of the lamb. And oh, I found myself being, and I had one dream though. I was sleeping in the bed, usually sleeping on that side that I usually sleep. And then I had, uh, uh, someone came in and said, hey. And I'm like, how you get in here? And I said, oh, wait a minute now. Okay, I'll get up. I'll get ready. And then I turned over. <laughs> and then all of a sudden I heard a voice say, you better get up and get ready. And that's when I knew that God was about to do something. Something mighty, something great was coming. And some people are waiting till the first of the year to start fasting and praying and getting ready. I'm here to let you know tonight, it's the time is now. Now, right now, right now, right now. Things are happening right now. Oh, he wants to use you right now. 
Oh, you waiting for that day to come. Oh, you waiting for something to clouds to open up and, and a lightning come through. God said right now. That's why it's important to have a yes spirit. <laughs> because now is now. Hallelujah. And when he said that, and then someone prophesied to me during that time, and she said, he's about to enlarge your territory. You are about to be called on. Get ready, elder. And here, uh, yesterday was called on. Even at the winter meeting was called on. And now, tonight, I'm called on. And I know that I'm, I'm, I'm in the right will of God because he got me ready for this. And somebody else, he's getting ready for this. That He wants you to get ready because the time is now. Somebody say, now. now hallelujah right now we have no time to waste Woo, people are dying children are being burnt up in houses shot in the schoolhouses he needs his people to rise up we can't afford a, a, a power shortage we've got to plug into our greatest source of power church we gotta we gotta abide in him as he said if you abide in me and my word abides in you you can ask whatever you want and it shall be given unto you but if you are not connected hallelujah if you are not tuned in with his presence if you don't hear his word and have a yes in your spirit oh you're gonna miss it you're gonna miss the now oh god oh god there's one more point coming <laughs> Somebody say, I need a drink. Through her encounter with Jesus at the well, the woman received a new learning, a new burning, and finally a new yearning. And here's where the discipleship kicks in. The woman received the living water and was satisfied. Satisfying her own physical needs was no longer a priority to her, though. The Bible tells us that she put down her water pot. I love this part. She put down her water pot and she became the vessel. The vessel that she used to carry her water, she put it down and became a living vessel, a living sacrifice. Oh, a vessel to carry his living water, his glory. She became a glory carrier. I like that. So that out of her belly flowed rivers of living water. God is calling us to put down our water pots, church. Those things we are preoccupied with that are keeping us from carrying his glory. We have to do this because God wants to use us to develop a new yearning in others. What am I talking about? A new desire. We desire so many things. Coming into this new, new year, some people desire to lose some weight. <clears throat> Some people desire to get out of debt. No, I can, <clears throat> that one too. Some people desire to be in a relationship or to get married or to have a child. And all these things are wonderful, but God says, seek ye first. The kingdom, which is why I love it that we're gathered here tonight, the first week of the year, the first Friday of the year, because we're seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And when we do that, everything else we need is going to be added. So you don't have to worry about the things of tomorrow. Oh, sufficient is the evil of today. But God's got you. Somebody say, God's got you. Yes, she became a glory carrier. Hey, thank you, Jesus. To ignite fires, to be a fire starter, to go in and to teach, not in a good way. I remember back in the day, Reverend Dr. Shelley Best told me I was going to be a fire starter. You probably don't remember that. <laughs> and I had to hesitate because I'm familiar that can go either way. Come on, somebody. Come on, church leaders. Because we got some church people in our churches that are fire starters, but not in a good way. And then the pastor got to spend all the time putting out the fires. Yeah. But she told me I would be a fire starter, meaning I would go and ignite some folks and, and, and tell them how good God is and help them to be filled afresh and anew. And God is calling us to put down our water pots and, and to ignite and to be fire starters, to teach and make disciples.
to bring others to Christ. The Bible tells us in John 4, so when a Samaritan woman had come to him, they urged him to stay with them. Oh, they urged Jesus to stay with them, and he stayed with them for two days. And many more believe of, because of his word. Then they said to the woman, now we believe not just because of what you said, mm. for we ourselves have heard him and we know that this indeed is the Christ, the savior of the whole world. The good news of Christ was first proclaimed to the people of Samaria through the testimony of this sinful, insignificant, no-name woman who drank the living water and was forgiven, cleansed, and satisfied never again to thirst. But that wasn't enough. She brought them, the men, to Jesus to encounter him for themselves. Bible said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. See, if you are thirsty, now you know what to do. Uh, there used to be a Sprite commercial that says, obey your thirst. <laughs> Get to the well and take a drink. And once you've been with the best, you won't settle for less. Bishop Brian Thompson wrote, stop apologizing about where you are and be intentional about where you're going, about your future. Get up in the morning early. Get to the spiritual well. Don't wait until noon. Get up early. Early morning prayer is important. Reverend Florence Clark said, get to God before the world gets to you. And when I first was appointed presiding elder, I said to God, I want more. I know the challenges that are in front of me. People were telling me I was crazy to leave that wonderful church at Spotswood. <laughs> called Spotswood and that beautiful parsonage and to go out <laughs> and pastor uh, and preside over the Boston district. But I trusted in God and I knew he would be with me. Why? Because he told me. And I went trusting in him and I said, Lord, I want more. He said, okay, you want more than get up in the morning at six. He said this to a person who is not a morning person. I can stay up till one, two, three o'clock in the morning, but get up early, hmm, that's a hard one. But that's what he said, you want more, do it. See, God honors when you have to sacrifice. When you do fast, when you do pray, when you get up and seek him first, for real first. And so I started getting up, I started calling people to pray with me, I started um, uh, trusting in God to get up and he got me up every time. Not only that, I started getting my pastors up. Uh-oh. Each one of them I pr prayed with for a whole week at 6 a.m. Every single one of them. Then I, I did not stop there. I went on and called up their wives. <laughs> and each one of them I prayed at 6 a.m. in the morning. And then I started calling other people, getting them up. Let, we got to seek God. We need God's power in this thing. We, we really truly want revival. And if we're going to see it, we've got to do some different things. And yes, yeah, some people I called, they said no. And, and some people said, no, I, can, I, I can't get up that early. And I said, you need to pray to pray like I do. <laughs> pray at night to get up in the morning. Yes. And I've seen God move. First of all, he's provided for all of my needs according to his riches and glory for four and a half years. My rent's been paid. My, my cupboards have been full. My bills are paid. Yeah, I got a little hangover debt, but that's going to be taken care of as well because God is a promise keeper. He promised to me that he would never leave me nor forsake me. He promised he would take care of me. If I hold my peace uh, and let him him fight my battles. I, I got the victory in Jesus. Yes. 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 I know it. I know it. I know it to be true. I trusted in the Lord and he came through. And every time I tried to take on a job, I got fired. <laughs> so I stopped trying, church, and trusted fully in the Lord. Because that's what he called me to. That's what I don't, I'm not saying he called you to that, but that's what he called me to. And when you trust him and you listen for his voice and have a yes in your spirit, you will watch him move mountains on your behalf. You will see debts come down, hallelujah, and spirits go up. 
they need to see Jesus in us. They need to feel the fire burning on the inside. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like it what the psalmist said in 63, 1 and 2. He said, you are, oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you or yearns for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I looked for you in a sanctuary to see your power and your glory. The psalmist had a power shortage, but he knew just what to do. Anybody want to see more of God's power moving in and through your life? And the lives of others. You know, God is so good because I didn't just stop with, with my pastors and their wives and the members of the Boston district. I jumped over to my family and I started telling them, I want y'all to get up and pray with me. All my sisters in the ministry, I, I asked them to get up. And some of the brothers too, amen, uh, Reverend Kelsey. I asked them to get up and pray with me too. And just recently, I'm starting to see the fruit of that. Hear me. Uh, last week, my middle niece, young adult, called me and said, are you praying with anybody next week? And God is so awesome. He just freed that time up. I said, no. Can I get that 6 o'clock spot? Hey, 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 hey but there's more. <laughs> there's more. Because now we're going to finish up tomorrow <laughs> morning at 6. I got a text today. From the baby girl, you know her, Janelle. <laughs> Auntie, are you praying with somebody next week? <laughs> no, I want that spot. Do you hear what I'm saying, young adults? Young adults, I'm, I'm not talking about mothers of the church. These young people want some real, hear me. They want something tangible. They're sick of what they're getting from the world. And they want to see a real and true living God. They want to see the move and the power of God. Oh, yes, they know it's more to this thing than what they have already experienced. More to this, just the mama's religion or the daddy's religion. They want to experience God for themselves. And we have a responsibility to let them know it's all right to get up and pray. Because the prayers of the righteous, the effectual, fervent prayers of the righteous availeth much. Do you believe that today? Hallelujah. 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 Anybody tired of seeing what you're seeing and you want more? Anybody just frustrated with what you've been going through and know that God deserves more? I can't understand it how he, we can come through a pandemic and our churches be shut down and then some, some of us come back like nothing happened and, and the rest of us stay at home. Oh my God. And people are looking at us. See, that pandemic was about us. It was about the church. Did y'all catch that? The liquor store stayed open. But the church is shut down. And still some churches are afraid to completely open. Fear. But God has not given us a spirit of fear. But of power and love and of a sound mind. How can we heal others and we're afraid of COVID? How can we help somebody be delivered from cancer and we're afraid that somebody might cough on us? When the Bible tells us that you might be bitten by a serpent but you won't die. That he has given us spiritual authority. It's time to go deeper, church. Woo, Jesus, it's time to go deeper. It's time to step out into the deep launch out into the deep so that we can reap that harvest. Please stand to your feet. I need all heads bowed. And this is not a salvation call. I'm going to save that for last. I'm going to flip it up. 
Some of us are thirsty and dry because we're trying to do it all by ourselves. We don't have any help. But how many know that Jesus is your help? Hallelujah. Yes. You gave me my hands to reach out to man. Come on, help me sing this song. To show them your love and your perfect plan. And your perfect plan. You gave me my ears. I can hear your voice. I can hear your voice so clear. I can hear the cries, the cries of sin. But can I wipe away their tears? Let's jump to the Lord. Lord, I'm available to you. Hey. My will I give to you. I'll do what you say to use me, Lord. Anybody want to be used? Hallelujah. To show someone. Hey! That enabled you to say. Hey! Yes. Oh, my story. My God, my God, my God. Hey, and I am available to you. Those of you who want more power, <laughs> you want more power, you need a drink, you want God to do some miraculous and wonderful things in your church this year. Hallelujah. Well, it starts with you. And I'm not just talking about the pastors and the preachers. Everybody in here has a, a job, a part, a gift, an assignment. But if you are, have a yes in your spirit, I'm inviting you to come forward at this time. You want to see more of God. You want to see him do a mighty work in and through you. Come, come. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, yeah. Uh, more available to you. Lord, I'm available to you. If you come forth, come believing, come trusting, come with an expectation, my will. Knowing God can do it. Hallelujah. Ask him to fill you up. Yes. Use me, Lord, to show someone that enable to say hallelujah. My storage is empty. Come on and empty out your storage. Empty it out. Let it all go. My storage is empty. Red. My storage is empty. Hey. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Red is empty. My storage is empty. Oh. Release it. Release it. Release it right now. All the hurts. All the pains. All the heartaches, cast your cares upon him right now. My storage, my storage is empty. Hallelujah, my storage. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, just, 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 oh God, worship him. Worship him, worship him, worship him, worship him. Worship him, worship him, worship him, worship him. Yes, you've emptied out your storage. Now receive a drink, receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive a drink right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, 
Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. All the heartaches, the pains, the disappointments. Let it go. Release it. Empty out. Cut it out. Hey, God, thank you. God, thank you. Hallelujah, my storage. Yes, yes, yes. May, hey, shay, yeah. Just talk to the, talk to God, talk to him. Let him know. Hey, hey, D, yes.
Hallelujah. Come on, stand to your feet and bless God. Come on, we're getting ready to go. Just stand to your feet. Stand to your feet and give him your very best praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You just continue to be filled, presiding elder. Those who came in looking for a filling got a filling. But if you came in here looking for nothing, you'll leave with nothing. But God is faithful. Because even if you change your mind right now, hallelujah, <laughs> he's still faithful. He might get you on the car on the way back home, and you will start speaking in a strange tongue. <laughs> I've seen it done before. God is good. I want to praise God for these preachers and pastors. See, what God is doing in this new season, he's not just using one person. It's in a corporate anointing that is falling. That's why you got to have a yes in your spirit. And as I was standing there, God told me before I came here, you call those who know up to help pray for these people because you can't do it by yourself. And guess what? I don't want to. I cry out for the corporate anointing to fall that you don't even have to lay hands on people, but they will receive because of the atmosphere that we are in, that we've created an atmosphere for God to move by his spirit and have his way in the lives of his people. That's what we got to get in our churches because young people ain't going to come running to the altar. Oh, but we've got to set an atmosphere so that God will meet them in the seat that they're sitting. Oh, I, I, got, I got so much to share with you, but I'll do that tomorrow because we're going to go deeper tomorrow. This just set the foundation, but we going deep tomorrow. So you want to get back here, so I got to let you go. Thank, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, praise God right there. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Just lift those hands up and receive. Ah. Oh. Just receive. Ah, God spoken. Just receive it. Glory to God. We've heard from him. And we have felt his power. And we heard the calling to go and reach the lost. Get out of self and drink from the holy water. Glory to God. From the holy fountain. Receive it, receive it. Just receive it. Just receive it tonight. Glory to God. Yes, Lord. Tell him yes. Tell him yes. From the fruit of your lips, tell him yes. Yes, Lord, not my will. God, it had been my will. I would have canceled this meeting. <laughs> I would have canceled it. it was my will. Let's cancel it. But I said, yes, Lord. <laughs> we will go forward. And you would speak to us. And didn't the Lord do it? Come on, praise him. Didn't he speak to us? Come on. Didn't he do it? Glory to God. He spoke to us. And we're grateful. And the prophetess have said there's more on tomorrow. So say yes, I'm coming tomorrow. Because God has something else. And I need everything he wants to give me to get off to a blessed start in 2024. How many want to get off to a blessed start in 2024? I want to get off to a blessed start in 2024. And so come tomorrow, hear what God has to say to us. Begin at 8. If you desire to come for coming to breakfast. 9 o'clock, the lay council will be here and ask you to be here. 
be a part of the lay council gathering. Sister Shelley Henry, won't you stand and praise God tonight? Praise God tonight. Just tell, the, just tell the Lord yes. Just tell the Lord yes. Praise God. All he wants from you is a yes spirit. And he'll give the directions that's needed for the Hartford District Lake Council. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll be here tomorrow at 9 and 10. Uh, teaching will take place. We talk more about discipleship from the presiding elder and Tashara person. Won't you stand? God bless you. She's going to be with us tomorrow. Just remain standing right there. Right there. God is using you. He has more. He has more. We we have seen his anointing on you from a young adult and now moving into young adult adulthood. <laughs> and tomorrow, just say yes. Even now, say yes, Lord. Whatever he desires to come from you tomorrow, we're ready to hear it. Are we ready? Are we ready to hear what Jesus said? We're ready to hear what God has to say for you. I want to hear it. But we're ready to receive it because we need to hear your voice and the voice from your generation. Come on, praise God right there. Come on, praise him right there, right there. We need to hear. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. As the preacher shall come and give us the, however she desired to dismiss us, and we'll see you tomorrow. Call others. Tell them there's a revival in the land. And come and be a part of the service on tomorrow here at Cross Street Church. Thank the Cross Street Church family. Come on, and this pastor for opening the door that we could come in and have this special experience on today. Thank you, Cross Street Church family. See you tomorrow. For those who won't be able to join for whatever the reason tomorrow, may God bless you and keep you and even if you think you're not thirsty, like the woman at the well, take a drink anyhow. God wants to use you, and I'm not talking to the preachers, I'm talking to the lay people now. That's why I wish y'all would come back. Well, you got a lay meeting, so you'll be here, amen. <laughs> to hear what is going to be said tomorrow. Because now is the time, somebody said now. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence, the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. And let us all sing together. Go in peace.